now we are joined by NBC's National Heads Up Championship winners. She took down a half a million dollars. UB.net's Annie Duke. Annie, thanks for being here. I'm happy to be here in my brief moment of time in LA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just flew in, right? Literally just today. Literally, I just flew in this morning, and then I am about to fly out again to uh, go play the Bay 101. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I've got a few hours. I'm kind of doing laundry right now to try so I can repack my bag. <laughs> really active on the circuit for you right now. A deep yeah. run at the LAPC, then mm -hmm. you just go and win this one, no yeah, problem. And now yeah. it's on to be a shooting star. We don't always see you at all these events. Is there a reason for kind of the more you know heavy activity in the poker circuit these days? Um, actually, yeah. I I took um, from October to February off mainly because I realized that when I was going into a lot of tournaments, I was like, well, if I get knocked out, I, I'll just be with my family, and that's really cool. And I was really taking that attitude of, of sort of resenting the poker because I felt like it was really taking away from time from my kids. So I took this whole chunk of time off where I really thought for long and hard about who I wanted to be. And, you know, I sort of came out the other side being like, I really do want to be a poker player and I'm just going to find a way to balance this in a way that, you know, fulfills what I want to do but also, you know, satisfies my kids. So the LAPC was perfect because I live in L.A. Um, NBC, I would never ever pass up, and I love the Bay 101 tournament. So I'm not, you're actually going to see me playing a lot more poker because I kind of recommitted myself to it. Like I, I actually credit my change in mindset a lot to the results that I've been having. How much do you think of poker is a motivational game? Because you hear people say that. I mean, you hear oh, Phil Ivey's in the mood to play, so he shows up and he wins. Well, you're kind of saying a similar mm -hmm. thing. You know, Andy Duke's in yeah. the mood to play now, so I'm going to go deep. I'm going to win one, and I'm going to you know just keep uh, blasting away at them. Well, you know, I don't think that that the the winning part necessarily follows, but it's the playing good part that really matters. There's a lot of very small edges that really can build up over hand after hand after hand. And I think that when you're not in the mood to play, you lose some of those small edges. So for example, in my case where I was like, well, I really want to get home to my kids, if I had a choice about whether to take a really gambly situation and a really high variance situation that maybe if I were really focused, I would realize I shouldn't take, I would just take it because I was like, well, I'll just gamble here because either I'll get a lot of tips sure. or I'll be home. And when you start making those kinds of choices over and over again, you know, they bite you in the butt. So. I think that that's what they mean. It's just really focusing and wanting to be there and not allowing distractions. It just gives you a much better chance to win because you don't make those mistakes. Now, when everybody hears Annie Duke at this point, they're thinking <laughs> Celebrity Apprentice, they're thinking charities, they're thinking so much media stuff going on. How validating is it to come into this NBC event and not even do well, but win the entire thing? Um, it's indescribable to me. I mean, I don't play a lot of poker recently. I, I play maybe 10 tournaments a year at the most. And because I really have been focused on raising my kids and doing the charitable work and some of the other TV, because that allows me to be home with my kids and still make money and, you know, all of that stuff. So, you know, I, I kind of hear the whispers. You know, she's not really a poker player. She's not actually any good. Um, my results have actually been pretty good for the few tournaments that I've played. Like, I haven't missed a final table at the WSOP and stuff like that. But even though I know in my heart that I'm a poker player, it kind of you know, it sucks when sort of you feel like other people don't know you're a poker player. Sure. So I feel like not just this, but the deep run at the LAPC, like I think those two results back to back, like I, I do, I feel really validated. And the fact is like, you know, even if you have no issues with self-esteem whatsoever, everybody likes to be validated, you know? So I can say all I want that I was kind of going around being like, well, I don't care what those people say, but you know, I did. So. Sure, absolutely. So it's nice. Was that a motivational factor also, though? I mean, you talk about the poker community is a lot smaller, I think, than a lot of people out there yeah. understand when they see that it's, you know, it spans the globe, but it's the same group of guys and girls going around playing these events, and those whispers can, you know, turn into yells when you hear them enough. How much was that a motivating factor for you? Interestingly enough, I don't think it was a factor in the LAPC. In the LAPC, it was really just about, I was, it was really exciting to be playing the poker that I was, and I think that that was really motivating me. This event has so much prestige to it, and when you look at the past winners, it's Phil Hellmuth, Chris Ferguson, Ted Forrest, Huck Seed, you know, Paul Wasica. Like, it's this amazing list of people. So I think that because of the prestige that goes along with this tournament, that was actually a big motivator, that I was like, I'm going to focus in on this tournament. And I think when you see the footage, you'll see, like, I am just like, boom, like there's nothing there except my opponent. And so I was just really focused in on like, I'm going to win this, I'm going to do really well, and because I want to shut people up. Is this win, do you think, going to propel you even more into poker? Obviously, you're talking about how you're focused on the family, and there's a lot of things that are pulling you away. But you get a little bit of the bug, obviously, when you end up winning something. Do you think it's going to push you a little bit more that direction? Um, I think that, you know, 
I, I was planning to play a little bit more poker anyway, but I actually don't want to fall into what happened to me before where I'm playing so much that I actually resent being there. That's why I took the time off in the first place. So what I'm going to do is, you know, I'm going to play Bay 101. I'm going to decide about the WPT Bellagio. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to play that yet. And then obviously I always commit to the World Series. And then my plan is actually to take two months completely off before the bike so that I really make sure that I am getting those long stretches of time where, you know, I feel like I'm just about family and just about the charity work and stuff like that. So I don't mm -hmm. end up resenting the game again. Sure. Well, you are the champion. Let's talk about your path to uh, victory at the NBC yeah. Heads Up Championship. You faced Andy Block in the first round, oh who's a God. guy who's done well in the past in this event, sure. and he is the He's ultimate math guy. Yeah. I know. He's the ultimate math guy. What was you know that sort of as a, as a first match? Did that win kind of propel you and, and make you a bit more confident? Well, let me say, Andy else? was not the person I was looking to draw. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Another good friend of mine, by the way. Um, Who were you looking to draw? Uh, Online qualifier. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a name you didn't know. A name I didn't know. Right. Uh, the Caesars guy. Like, sure, sure. <laughs> um, Andy obviously is amazing at heads up. And uh, I mean, I think I played well against him, but I also held the deck. And he did some amazing things. I mean, he had ace queen on a hand where I had two jacks, and the board came ace jack completely dry, and he managed to not go broke on it. I mean, obviously he lost money on the hand, but he, he played a line that kept him from going broke, which shows you how good he is. Mm -hmm. um, I luckily had more cards than he did. And having gotten past him, because he was definitely, I was like, oh no, look who I drew in the first round. I'm going to go out in the first round again. This is mm -hmm. ridiculous. They're never going to invite me back. <laughs> like all this stuff was going through my head. So once I got past him, it was a huge confidence boost. Like, ugh, like monkey off my back, you know? Well, even speaking of that, how much of these matches came down to just having the right cards, and how much came down to really manipulating the people that you were playing against at the time? I would say that. Um, for me, against Andy, it was mostly having the right cards, not surprisingly. Mm -hmm. um, there were a few matches where it was really very much about manipulation, including, by the way, my first match against Eric. But to be fair, the second match against Eric was all about him manipulating me. Mm -hmm. um, I played really, really badly in the second match against Eric. I don't know what happened to me there. I played so well up until that point, and I just fell apart. So I got it back together for the third match, luckily. Mm -hmm. But, um, so I think that actually quite a bit of it is manipulation, because in, in heads up, I mean, obviously, eventually you have to have a hand, but you can actually get quite a few chips without ever showing your cards over. So um, I actually had one match that, um, unless it was all in, I actually only turned my cards face up once. So then wow. obviously, it's not really about the cards. Sure, there. that's impressive. Yeah. Well, to make it to the title, you had to beat a former champion, Paul Wasica, I, in oh, the second round. Yes. I mean, how, how was that match unbelievable. Overall? Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, that was actually in the third round. Um, that was just, that was by far mentally the toughest match that I played because it lasted so long. It became it a battle of attrition. I was falling online. Well, I got him down short really fast. And then uh, we got all in. I ha he got all in. I had jacks. He had ace 10. Boom. He hit an ace. Then I battled back. He, he, so then he got caught up to me. He actually got the chip lead mm -hmm. at one point. I battled him back down low. And then I had 7 he had ace 5, and he, he made a flush. Um, all that was made up for, though when I got all in with ace-10 versus his aces. Right. <laughs> and the board came ace-jack, rag, and then a, a queen on the turn and right. a king on the river. <laughs> so I certainly have no complaints. So at that point, we were very, very close to chips. So then I just, I, I, at that point, I just destroyed him. So there, there wasn't much that he could do once I sucked out on his aces. So, mm -hmm. um, but that was at the two-hour mark. So it was just really, really long. Because the thing that I can absolutely say about Paul Wasica is that that guy doesn't give up a quarter. Like, he is so good and so solid, and he doesn't give anything up. And I, was, I felt like I was lucky to get him down so low twice um, to even have the chance to knock him out. But he's so gracious, too. He was really sweet. So after our match, he said um, to me, if you keep playing the way you are, I think you're going to win. I would bet you to win. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, the nicest thing to hear from Huge someone compliment. who you just had ace 10 against their <laughs> aces. Like, well, also someone who's you. won. So, yeah. I mean, he'd been there, he'd done right, that, he exactly. knew. Right, yeah. exactly. So that was definitely mentally, my, just absolutely, it was, it was a marathon.